Welcome back to the Arcopia Show. So on today's episode, it's entitled, What is Government? A little bit of this is going to relate to Canada, also the USA, but when you really sit down and think about it, what is this government? What are these, what is this thing that's making me do all these things and making me pay and (laughs) is in my life and regulating me and taking away things from me all the time? What is this thing? What is government, right? As a newborn baby, you're, you're, mother and father bring you into this world and you you come out and all of a sudden it seems like you're the property of another entity it's, it's like why is that right now i am no expert at this subject but this is a rabbit hole that i'd like to introduce anybody listening to um, there's many different people who have talked about this there's a little bit of information it's all very complicated, and it's meant to be very complicated. And essentially, it is why, why, and what is government, and why am I under this government, and why am I not free, right? Um, one of my favorite things in the world is, you know, just like the Matrix, Neo in the Matrix. You know something's wrong. You know something. You, you kind of got the the hint of a few different things, but you don't know exactly what it is. And going down this rabbit hole, it slowly puts pieces together of things that I already knew, but it puts definitions to the concepts that I already knew about, and it puts things in clarity about things that I inherently knew were to be true, but didn't know exactly how things worked. So there's a, there's a whole bunch to this, but what is government? So Canada, what is Canada? Canada is actually a corporation. So when you hear all these leftists talking about, oh, it's the corporation's fault, the corporations are gouging, it's the big corporations. Well, I hate to break it to you, but Canada is a corporation. Canada is actually incorporated in the USA, and the Canada incorporation documents are in a filing cabinet somewhere or a big book somewhere in, I believe it's Washington. Don't quote me on that. But uh, many different people that I've talked to and many different things I've read about have, have introduced me to this. And what's interesting about the USA is the USA is also a corporation. So it's it's really interesting, <laughs> really really interesting. A lot of this this information it it goes down into everything operates on legal definitions and uh, Black's Law dictionary uh, etymology, like the meaning of actual words, and Banker's Law. It's it's kind of like they're, it's an open-air trick that they're playing on everyone. So right from birth, and I know this because I have three kids, and it's really interesting going through this. And I always knew, like, at a very young age in Canada, we have something called a social insurance number, a SIN number. And it's like, you might as well get that tattooed on your your arm like a Holocaust thing and uh, like your property, right? And it gives you these social benefits. It's like you're a member of something, um, even though you didn't sign on to be. And also when you have children or when you were born, before you're allowed to leave the hospital, you need to fill out a birth certificate and give the original documents to the nurse or else you're not allowed, quote unquote, to leave the hospital. So with my boys and and with my parents when I was born, our birth certificate is filled out. What is your name? And I think it said put all capital letters. So, uh, yeah, first name, last name, and it's it's like you're you're sign, signing up with a legal document to create an entity for a higher entity, which is a corporation. So you're signing on a new child or you have been signed on to be somewhat of a property or an entity of a corporation. Now this, I've heard some mixed things on this, but 
some people call this your legal fiction. So whenever you operate in the world, you're not operating as yourself, as a as a, a man or f a free, just plain human being under God, right? You are operating as a legal fiction that they gave you on your birth certificate underneath the corporation. So it's not per se a corporation because I, you know, I can start a corporation. I can start a hundred corporations. A corporation by definition is a dead entity. Your legal fiction is also a dead entity, right? It is not actually you. It is you representing a dead entity. Just like you, if you started a corporation, you are, are operating a dead entity. That dead entity can't operate without a living free person. But essentially, when you're born, you, you on your birth certificate, a vessel is created. And it's not you. It's a separate entity that you are representing because you don't know any better. Very, very complicated. <clears throat> it, it, and it's it's really funny. So if you've ever had a sole proprietorship business in Canada, and I'm assuming USA is the same, it's really interesting because you get, you apply for a, a business number and a name, but when you do government-related documents, you do not put your business name that you registered. It's just an operating name as a subname to your personal name. So when you're importing products for a sole proprietor, ship you do not put your company name even if even though it's for a sole proprietorship company you put your name so essentially anybody can phone in and get a GST number a PST number import export number with their personal name and you are already kind of operating as a sole proprietorship but it's not exactly a sole proprietorship because when you're an employee you get the withholding tax, which doesn't happen if you operate as a sole proprietorship. It's kind of a funny thing. But when when you are just that l lowest entity, so just your name, legal fiction, not, not actually you, but your legal fiction, you get screwed the most. You're subject subjected to the highest taxation, and you get the worst of the worst. So... You, if you were to start a corporation, and uh, which is a dead entity, you get a lot of the benefits like tax breaks and um, limited liability for that dead entity that you started, and some protection and some of the same protections that levels of government would have. But it's kind of a funny thing because if Canada is a corporation, and you, 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 you know, it's not really a conspiracy for myself anymore. Um, it's just so complicated. A person could waste their whole life trying to figure all this out. But it might be a very fulfilling uh, journey to take, uh, going down this this rabbit hole, and to free yourself if you value freedom. But you're filing a corporation underneath the Canada Corporation. It's like, would you like to file provincially or federally? And, well, federally, I guess, that seems to be the highest form that they offer you. But you're a corporation underneath the Corporation of Canada, right? So there's still a corporation above you, so there is this hierarchy thing. You can start a corporation. There's something to do with trusts as well, which is essentially a corporation of a different name with a couple different things in it. I'm still learning about this. And you can literally, if you're smart enough and learn their system enough, you can play their own game. But Canada is not a country. We, I forget if it's the UN Council or something, but Canada can't get a seat on it because Canada was never a confederation. Canada literally is not a country. Canada by definition is uh, literally it, it, it's, it has to do with maritime law and it means water in, inland and 
everything's related to water. So the land of Canada isn't Canada. It's like no man's land. Canada is just the water. Now, there's a few people that have talked about this. So just Curtis Stone, the urban farmer, has talked a little bit about this, the maritime law and what Canada is and that it's all a lie. But uh, another really, really good one, if you want to go deep in this rabbit hole, the fellow's name, search him on YouTube, David Strait Utah Seminar. It's about a 12-hour seminar, so buckle up, but it's very, very interesting. And it's mostly USA-related, but it does all relate to Canada because it's all the same thing. It's a legal system a corporate system that you're under and it's all the same. It's banker's law, uh, Black's law, dictionary law, and essentially you're engaging in commerce with the corporation of the so-called country that you're living in. So everything is a commercial transaction. When you get a speeding ticket, if you're going one kilometer an hour over the speeding thing, if you get a cell phone ticket while driving, if all these things do no harm, right? But this David David guy gets into some crazy stuff. It's to change your status from the legal fiction that they gave you kind of when you were born. They put your mother who just had a child who is under duress and the nurses don't know anything, but it's just like their job. You have to sign this form. You'll from you're only a free human being for like a few hours after birth until your parents sign that birth certificate and give them the original copy then from the rest of your days you're kind of operating as a legal fiction and under ownership of the corporation above you so it's a it's a process but there are ways and there are people who have changed their status back to just a free man under God um, away from the legal fiction. And so when they go into court and have to deal with the Corporation of Canada or the Corporation of the USA in any matter, they, they express that their status that, that you do not understand. You are not under them. You do not stand under them. You're a free man. It gets into titles of things so most people think that if they bought a piece of property or bought a house that they own it um, you actually likely do not have the actual title of ownership of that like the actual title you probably have something that more represents a registration so even though you bought and paid for something uh, you do not have the title you likely have a registration this David gets into some things about vehicles when if you go to the dealership and buy a brand new vehicle they will uh, charge you a f government fee that they say is just necessary this is just part of the uh, everybody does it right and they will send the title away and give the title of that vehicle to the corporation of canada or the usa wherever it is and then what you get is a vehicle registration that has annual fees on it. So you don't actually own your vehicle. You don't have the actual title to your vehicle. You just have a registration. And the big corporation has somewhere the title of that vehicle. So they own the vehicle. But there are ways you can change your personal status, get away from your legal fiction, track down the actual title of your own property or house or land, track down the title of your actual vehicle, you can get uh, get your kids, if you have kids, free from this system as well. There's different ways uh, because as it sits, if your kids, if you signed a birth certificate and things, my understanding is they are not your kids. They are pro property, just other dead entities of the larger corporation. And I know you're probably thinking, this Dean guy, he is nutso, man. What is he talking about? This is crazy, crazy stuff. And, uh, yeah, that's what I think, too. And I am by no means a master of anything. The, the, going down this rabbit hole a little bit, 
has made me want to go be a lawyer. Like, I, I don't know, they likely don't teach lawyers when you get a lawyer degree, some of this stuff, but if you go get, uh, f figure out all the definitions and the legal terms and banker's law and things and to really tackle this, like literally, I, I value freedom so much. It, like, I believe every man man and woman that was is on this planet is all equal equal opportunity but they're just enslaved without them knowing it everyone has the same opportunity to get out of slavery and free themselves and that everyone is free but it's just easier to be kind of enslaved in the system and uh, go about their days and not know any better but let me read you there's a cool website. It's called the MythIsCanada.com, and I've never met this fellow or talked to him or, or have any affiliation. I just read his entire thing, and it's very interesting. But here are eleven very important questions that you need to ask yourself, and this is regarding Canada. I'm just going to read directly off his website, and I encourage you to go check it out and and uh, dig into yourself and and see what you think. But where are the Articles of Confederation? If Canada had a confederated in 1867 and is a sovereign nation, like, there aren't any documents. Why was Canada known as the Dominion of Canada, a British colony, until 1938 if Canada had confederated in 1867 and is a sovereign nation? Why in 1867 was the BNA Act created to be letters patent for a Governor General to the Dominion of Canada if Canada had confederated and is a sovereign nation? Why in 1893 would the British Parliament deem it necessary to repeal certain sections of the BNA Act with a Statute Law Revised Act if Canada confederated in 1867 and is a sovereign nation? Why in 1931 would the British Parliament create the Statute of Westminster to nullify the Dominion of Canada if Can Canada actually confederated in 1867? Why in 1946 did a foreign monarch, King George, appoint a representative for the UK, a Governor General, and then command the Parliament of Canada to create letters patent and command the PM at that time to sign on his behalf those letters patent in 1947 for his Governor General if Canada confederated and was a so sovereign nation. Why did Prime Minister Pierre Elliott Trudeau in 1880, or 1982 have the government create the Canada Bill and then take that bill to a foreign monarch and have her parliament pass that bill as the Canada Act, 1982, if Canada actually confederated 153 years earlier and is a sovereign nation? Why do Prime Ministers... And other officials, when sworn into office here in Canada, swear their allegiance to a foreign monarch, Queen Elizabeth, and not to the people of Canada, if Canada actually confederated. If Canada is a sovereign nation, why does the government of Canada, in their Interpretations Act, define Canada as the internal waters and territorial seas? Why was it necessary in 1990 to sue a member of the federal parliament J. Littlechild MP to force him to do his duty to his constituents and have the courts rule against his con constituents if Canada actually confederated and was a sovereign nation. Why in the Constitution Act of 1867 of Canada is there no clause that allows for land for the government of Canada to become a sovereign nation if Canada can Federated in 1867 and is actually a sovereign nation. Now, th that's just 11 little uh, questions on their website that I thought were very beneficial. But right now, as current events, it's January 2023 already here, the federal government's pushing their limits with a few different provinces, uh, mainly Alberta and Saskatchewan, another one, where I am from, Saskatchewan. But uh, 
I believe her name is Danielle Smith, the new uh, leader of Alberta, is starting to talk about Albertan sovereignty and taking, like, declaring their sovereignty over the federal government and not letting them have jurisdiction kind of over, over them. So actually starting to declare their sovereignty. And Saskatchewan's mm -hmm. doing similar things. There's another stinker in there when you start to really, uh, this might be beneficial if you want to go down this rabbit hole, but Canada isn't a country. Canada is a corporation. Canada did not confederate. We're all just nomad, voluntarily paying taxes, voluntary listening to stupid rules, voluntary abiding by stupid laws and things. It's literally, you can... Uh, look into what it takes to start a country, what it takes to confederate and start a constitution. And it's literally, you get some people together, certain people with certain titles, write a few things on a piece of paper and declare your sovereignty. So it's literally, if, if I had a, a community, like a preparedness community or something, and you went down these rabbit holes, you can declare your sovereignty and get away from the Corporation of Canada. Now, isn't that really interesting? That might be worth spending a lot of time and effort looking into because I see all these people that they're... I don't care what side you're on, right? If it's... Uh, you're, you're protesting, what does that do? Nothing. It's like you're, you're uh, standing under the Corporation of Canada, right? And... You're protesting some law, but you're legal, legal fiction. They can do whatever you want. They can fine you whatever number they want. They can put you in prison, whatever you want. They can increase your taxes, whatever they want. They can take your property if they want. They can take your kids if you want. They can do everything if you are uh, operating under your legal fiction. If you change your status to a free man or declare sover sovereignty and literally get away from Canada. It literally solves all problems, right? So if, if people are concerned with mandatory vaccinations, uh, all these stupid taxes, uh, the Canadian dollar that they're printing into oblivion and inflating away, uh, gun rights, like taking away this and, and charging you that and increasing fees on this, and all that, it's literally, I think that there's, it's a good, instead of wasting your time protesting, this might be a good cause to go down and free yourself and make yourself not a slave. Because we essentially are all slaves, part of a corporation. And if you think about what a corporation is, again, it's a dead entity. It's, um, right, I can start a corporation, um, and it's just whatever, call it one, two, three, four, incorporated. And who owns that? Well, Dean. Dean has the majority of shareholders in that. Okay, well, Dean can start one, two, three, four, Inc., and then I can appoint a president, a vice president, a uh, secretary of the treasury, and then have all these departments under it, and managers and employees, and I can create my own tokens like a currency underneath 1234 Inc. And I could be the shareholder of it, but nobody knows, right? You just tell them that they're like free and tell them that here's a registration on your land, but, you know, the corporation actually owns the land. And yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. So I could be Dean and you don't know that I own the corporation that all of you are living under, 123 Inc. Uh, we could just call it a country and make a song about it and, and wave a flag around and give you a sports team and some bread and circus and then uh, have you uh, essentially enslaved without knowing that you're enslaved. And then Dean could be outside the corporation uh, controlling it, right? The president of the corporation or the prime minister or the the vice president or or anything they they're just puppets at the top of the corporation that and you could let the underlings of the the corporation tell them it's a democracy and they can vote for what they want and who what leader they want but it doesn't matter right 
they're not a uh, primary shareholder of the corporation uh, that makes the actual decisions. So there, there are some, uh, there's some stinkers and some thinkers <laughs> in there. And again, I am no master, but I believe this stuff to be actually 100% true. It's just very complicated. Nobody's going to help you. You have to kind of dig into this yourself, and there is a few people doing that. It's not common knowledge. They don't obviously teach you that in school. They have f- f- gave you fluoride and dumbed your IQ down 14 points there. They're keeping you dumb and docile and comfortable enough with bread and circus that you'll never, you know, look into any of this stuff. But it's probably a worthwhile uh worthwhile thing to look into over anything else I can think of. No sense like making a sign like Trudeau has to go. That's that's a waste of time that puts a big target on your back and actually me doing this podcast too is probably a really, really dumb idea. Right? But anyways, let me know what you think about that. If you've uh, seen anybody else talking about it, if you have any other recommendations, I'll put a couple of important links in the description of this that you can look into if you've got a free 12 hours i invite you to check out that uh, utah utah seminar essentially it is uh quite enlightening and um i believe that guy for the most part is telling the truth i i mean i trust no one but what he says makes sense and it clicks with many of the things that i am questionable always been questionable about and it puts puzzle pieces together that make so much sense Uh, another thing you can do you can get yourself a black's law dictionary that has the actual words as the system uh, defines them right because like a webster's dictionary will give you or wikipedia gives you false definitions and they're changing all the time whereas a banker's dictionary and uh, an et- etymology dictionary, the meaning of actual words, and Black's Law Dictionary, you can see what they're actually talking about. And, uh, yeah, corporation means dead entity. You can uh, literally see all the legal terms when you go to the in the court system, what they call the gate that you walk through, everything's maritime law kind of shipping terms, like you're literally operating everything you do as your legal fiction is an operation of commerce in between the bigger system the bigger corporation and and you literally they they're not out for your own interest interest they're uh you know the the, the police aren't there for your benefit they're policy enforcement agents and revenue collection agents right Canada Revenue Agency that's like the IRS but in Canada like I I always thought why is it called Canada Revenue Agency it's so weird it's uh and all your little municipalities all your provinces are sub corporations sub entities underneath the bigger entities and it's all just a massive pyramid scheme and uh, the pyramid picture comes back into everything the uh, the pyramids are shapes are in everything it's not a conspiracy it's you know there's at your little department in a government if you have a government job it's you have a manager and then they have assistant managers and then there's workers under there that's a pyramid oh the government itself oh you got a prime minister or a president and then a vice president and secretary of the treasury or governor general and stuff like that oh guess what that is that's a pyramid right there's a it's just a hierarchy of things and it's crazy now of course some of this information is only for those who have the i don't know intellectual ability and the desire to be free and the natural ability to know that you know you're a slave now most people aren't going to be interested in this at all and it gets into, I was going to do another podcast about the morality of slavery. So if people are comfortable enough 
they are happy in their situation. People do not want to be free because being completely free means being completely personally responsible and they do not want that. They want a kind slave master. So if there's different slave masters to choose, they will want the one that gives them the most free goodies with the least amount of work. They're over the one that requires more work with less free goodies. And this goes into democracy as well, and my views on democracy. It's because, geez, this whole system, it's a slave system that of people that want to be slaves. And actually... It's better for a lot of people to leave them in their their fake land, let them sing that they're free, but know that they're slaves, or you know that they're slaves, they don't know that they're slaves, they're happiest there. That's why this information isn't very common knowledge, that's why this Utah seminar only has 10,000 views on it, and it's it's crazy. So again... The guy could could waste a lot of time going down some of these rabbit holes. Is it worth it? Is it not worth it? I I put myself in a situation where I'm I'm still a slave and I still have have to operate under my legal fiction because I just don't know enough to get out of it, right? So, uh, for instance, on my own property, I assumed that I had a title, uh, but actually I probably don't have the superior title to the property. I have something that more resembles a registration, so I actually probably don't own my land, and then in the future, trying to figure out, well, if I'm going to build all this stuff and put my entire life into my property to maintain it and do permaculture principles and plot trees and dig a pond and build things and self-sufficiency and build something good in a land that's really really dumb with a lot of dumb people and dumb systems around me <clears throat> I would like to be able to pass that down to the kids and how do I do that if I'm a slave in the slave system well they make it very difficult so this this triggers me to look further into different things to structure things like should I have the have landed my personal name corporate name or a trust or or what and do I need to track down the superior title or is it the one that I have good enough if that's the trust that I have and there's all these things and then because my mind works this way it leads me down these rabbit holes and you get to the actual fundamental bottom line that you literally have to change your status and stop identifying as the vessel that they put you in, which is a dead entity legal fiction, right? Dean is a dead entity as far as I'm doing commerce or forums or any interaction with anything in society. It's I'm the man behind the dead entity and I don't want to be a slave, right? So, but actually it's in most people's best interest to keep them a slave which is kind of uh, another crazy thought experiment if you could really dig into that one maybe I will yet we'll see but let's leave it at this so people came to Canada USA kind of North America like the kind of the pioneers to get free like this barren land to live an extreme hard life because Essentially, they wanted, you know, to be free, the adventure, to struggle, to not have tyranny over them. And that's how USA actually became a country, was uh, in 1776, right, the American Revolution. And they did that over uh, literally a tea tax, a uh, tax on tea, um, not uh, all the things that we have with government right now. So my personal personality, if there was another continent other than like Antarctica where you can't do anything or like live on a glacier or something, but someplace I could go that was free and a new place to pioneer and make a better place, I'm the first one on the boat, right? Because we don't, there is no other place that, you know, I'm aware of. Who knows? It's all lies, so... But there's, I, I don't feel that there's any place to go. So I hunker down here and 
this kind of information might be, you know, a better option than to flee, I guess, if we're looking for freedom. So whether that's declaring our own personal sovereignty, changing status, declaring sovereignty as a micro-community and literally a constitution on a micro-community and get away from the larger corporation somehow, I don't know. I, I really don't know, but I don't know. I, I figured uh, my f- listeners of my podcast might enjoy this if you're, you like some of the other things I've talked about. I am by no means an expert on this topic, but again, I'll put in the description below the links to some information, uh, and you can have a little glimpse down this rabbit hole that might be the most important rabbit hole and see if you want to pursue it. But again, I have a feeling that you could spend an entire life with this subject, you know, in the spirituality thing. It's just like, do you want to spend that much time or you just just want to spend it in a different way? Knowing that you're a slave, but getting away from the system as far as you can without going down this massive rabbit hole of status changes and things. But let me know what you think. Let me know if you've heard some of that information before. Let me know if, I don't know, you feel the same way about a few things. Let me know if you've heard of that David Strait or the Utah Seminar before. Even that Curtis Stone, urban farmer, he got into maritime law and talks about being a man on the land and Canada literally isn't like by definition doesn't cover the the land it only covers waters and maritime law and and things that's only a tiny part of it but it gets into bankers law legal like law everything's a commercial transaction it's it's crazy it's crazy if that's super eye-opening for you If that's too big of a pill for you to swallow, I'm sorry. But thanks for listening to the podcast, and uh, we'll see you next time. Take care of yourselves.